Hi everyone, I'm Jim and welcome to the review of The Spark, the fifth studio album by the band Enter Shikari. Today we're celebrating the fifth anniversary of the record, so I've decided to go back to it and see if it still holds up or not. I've been a massive fan of this band since January 2012, I think that's when the third album was released, A Flash Flute of Colors. Back then I was astonished by their sound because it reminded me of a metal version of The Prodigy and I've enjoyed that album a lot. And when The Spark was released I wasn't happy with it, so let's see what I think about it nowadays. We have the same lineup here as usual and the production is tight, everything sounds clean and massive. The message is diverse, as usual we have a lot of social and political commentary, but also deep personal lyrics as well. Structure of the songs is mostly basic, we have some exceptions, some tracks are more advanced than the others. The music is very experimental, I think this is the most experimental album by this band. And the vocals, as usual, interesting, lots of different styles, we have some singing, some screaming, stuff like that. Let's just rate individual songs. The album's opener, The Spark, is an intro, I don't like it. Next song, The Sides. I really don't like this one, guys. It sounds very puppish and boring, to be honest. Especially the oh 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 do 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 oh 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 oh. The instrumental work very weak, not interesting. The vocals are atrocious. The song is about uh, trying to explore uh, different types of music and just the world and stuff like that. But I like the message, but I don't like <laughs> anything else. This is. This is below average stuff, one of the worst Enter Shikari songs for me, 4 out of 10. Live Outside, on the other hand, is also experimental, but actually great. I love the instrumental work here, we have some guitars, some bass, some electronic elements, but also a very happy vibe, the atmosphere is interesting, and the vocals are just great, I love them. The meaning of the song is that you want to have a break from all the social media, stuff like that. You just want to go back to basics, at least that's how I interpret it. It's not heavy at all, but it's a banger, so yeah, 8 out of 10. I can say the same thing about Take My Country Back, really cool instrumental work here. The vocals are great, especially in the break in the middle. I don't want to take my country back. I want to take my country forward. I like that very calm atmosphere of that break in the middle. The lyrics are about UK leaving the EU, which wasn't a good decision and the band aren't happy with it. I like that line that I don't want to take my country back, I want to take it forward because yeah, that's what you want to do and it's all about going back to things, right? And it's tiring for me because I have a lot of friends who think that way, that, you know, everything was better in the past. Yeah, but you are not living in the past, you are living in the present. And by whining all the time that it was better in the past, what are you doing for the future? Yeah, nothing, exactly. You know why everyone loves the past? Because it's the past. We, as a humans, we have that tendency to love things that we don't have. You know what we don't have? The past, because it already happened. So you always think better about the previous years, even if they were awful, because they have happened and you think that your situation right now is worse, but it actually isn't. It's just a matter of perspective. I like this song because, as you can see, it started a philosophical monologue from me. So yeah, it does something good. 8 out of 10, great song. Airfield. I think it's the best Enter Shikari song ever written. It's very melodic and emotional. It's about how you feel that everything around you is awful and you want to die. You're unhappy with your life. You're going nowhere, but things are going to get better. So just get through those dark times. I love this song. It helped me a lot, especially when I was raped in the past, I would listen to this song a lot. So yeah, it saved me from suicide and it means a lot to me and it always will be. 
I like this version on the album, but the live version from 2019, I think? Where, where was it? I don't remember right now, but the live version was even better and more emotional. This is a perfect song that I wish that I could hear live someday. It starts very mellow and calm, but at the end it becomes more heavy, with guitar riffs just drumming, anger, and at the end we have the sweet release of emotions and calmer sound. Yeah, I love Airfield, 11 out of 10, legendary song for me. Rubber Rouser is a song that doesn't have any meaning, it's just about Enter Shikari, playing life and you feel their energy around you, stuff like that. I dig the instrumental here, it reminds me of the previous Enter Shikari records, it has that vibe, while the previous songs on this park did not have any of that vibe. Here we have that electronic vibe, amazing melodies as usual, the vocals are great. I think like the chorus in Rubber Rouser was used again in the song The Pressure's In. Listen to those songs, I think you will hear the similarities. It's almost the same thing, I don't know why, is it a easter egg or something? I like The Precious in more, but Rubber Rouser is a 10 out of 10 song, I love it. Shinri Nyoku is a song that is probably the most experimental here at the beginning. A lot of weird sounds and the structure is actually interesting, especially in the middle, I love that part. And the ending, where things go heavier, the lyrics are about the nature, how we should appreciate it more and sometimes just disconnect from social media, stuff like that and just be in a forest. It's an interesting song for sure, 8 out of 10. Undercover Agents is another great song. It has more of a poppy vibe, very happy sounding. I urge you to explore the meaning of this song by yourself and yeah, it's, it's great, 8 out of 10. The Revolt of the Atoms it's one of my favorite songs on this record, right up there with Airfield. I love the weird atmosphere of the instruments. The vocalist said in one of the interviews that the beginning of this song was written in 2004. I wonder if that's true, if so then nice, because it does have that Oscar Enter Shikari vibe. I love the lyrics here, it's about atoms going against humanity, just trying to eradicate all life. So yeah, interesting concept, great stuff, especially the atmosphere and the breakdown. Beautiful, just beautiful. 10 out of 10. And the final song, an ode to lost jigsaw pieces in two movements. It's a very sad song, I must say, especially the lyrics. The first part is about relationships how the other person disappoints you and they leave you and you have to live with it because it was a long-term relationship. I think the vocalist was with a girl for seven years and she left him. I can relate to that but not as much because I was also in a long-term relationship but I was just stabbed in the back like literally because I had a cancer treatment a couple of months ago as I even said on this channel and I've survived it but at the same time, the person I was in relationship with was just lying to me and, you know, cheating on me behind my back when I was sick in a hospital, so yeah, what a shit can't, but that's what life is and you have to live with it. I feel this sadness and the second part is probably about the death of vocalist grandma. My grandma died last year, so I also feel this song more than I had when the album was released, so it actually has more meaning to it for me, and yeah, it's sad. The structure is more advanced, it's basically two songs combined into one. Everything here is really good, and if you have suffered a loss of a partner or a family member, then you will relate to it. It's a heavy song emotionally. Musically, it's very calm and soothing. So yeah, it's a 9 out of 10 for me, almost perfect. The Embers is just 5 out of 10, it doesn't have any meaning for me. Just some chords that I don't care for. 
but there are also bonus tracks. The Japanese edition has two of them. The first one is Redshift. This song, now this song is a wasted potential. It was the first single released from the record, I would say. It was a year before the Spark and I hated it. I hated it so much because I still do, but the first two minutes are so awful. Everything about them. The music, the vocals, only the lyrics are great here, because they are about space and Car Sagan, exploring the universe, stuff like that. But after that, the song shifts into an interesting interlude and has an amazing 10 out of 10 bridge. Why would you do this to me? Create a shit song and then give it some amazing part. It's very hard for me to rate this song because I don't want to listen to it fully. I will always skip those first two minutes and just listen to the interlude and the bridge and the rest of the song is just garbage. Just throw it away. Next song, Supercharge, features Big Nasty, or however you pronounce that nickname. Amazing song, it has that old school Enter Shikai vibe. Amazing vocals from Ru. Everything is great here. Except that guy, except Big Nasty. What the fuck are you doing, man? He's a rapper, he's not in sync with the beat, he's saying some cringy stuff. Like, please remove him from the song. It's like that Limbiscuit song that had Lil Wayne on it. And the fans just removed him from the song. Just do it the same with Big Nasty. I don't want him here. So yeah, it would have been a 10 out of 10 song, but sadly the Big Nasty is here, so it's 9 out of 10. We also have another song here called Hoodwinker, which was released in 2016, but wasn't on the album. I don't know why. It's the best Enter Shikari song, like ever. There was some speculation that the lyrics were about the refugee crisis, but the band debunked it. So many people think that it's criticizing religion, especially Christianity. I'm always having lots of fun listening to this song because the beginning is heavy, we have some screaming, even some little growling here and there. The chorus is beautiful, the singing is beautiful, it's full of energy, something that the spark doesn't have. Hoodwinker, beautiful stuff, 11 out of 10, you cheeky fucker, great, great, great. And the final song, Stop the Clocks, Ru told in an interview that it was a song written after the spark to celebrate the spark or something like that. It has some references and melodies from an old school Enter Shikai song called No Sleep Tonight. And I must say that I love Stop the Clocks, but not the single version. The live 545 Fest version. I'm giving it 10 out of 10. I love the instrumental work, the vocals, everything, the whole atmosphere of the song. Stop the clocks, hey, stop the clocks, I'm killing time. Beautiful stuff. And I am just saddened by the fact that the single version sucks ass. It doesn't have half of the interesting vocal melodies that are happening in the live 545 fest version and it has some weird clipping noises or some shit. So yeah, check out the live version, which is amazing. Avoid the single one. It's too polished, it's overproduced. If I had to rate it, it would be like 7 or 6 out of 10. But the live version just beautiful. Enter Shikari is one of those bands that can make an average song sound like a masterpiece live. It's a great trait to have. To sum it all up, the consistency is various. We have some great songs here, some legendary ones, and some very average or bad songs. Flow is disrupted, at least for me. I will never listen to the Spark or the Sides ever again, because I hate this stuff. Replayability? Yes, it's a good album. I think it's one of their weakest albums, but it's still good. It's very fun to listen to, for the most part, but you can find it even better if you enjoy popish sound like the sides. I really don't, or Redshift, which I am just skipping it, just listening to the interlude and the bridge, which are great. 
the rest I don't want to hear ever again. Check this stuff out, don't hate it because it's calm or not heavy enough. I enjoy bands that experiment with their sound and this wasn't a failed one. I enjoyed most of what was happening here. This album could have been better if they would just remove the sights, the spark and the embers entirely and start with Hadwinker. Hadwinker should be the opener for this album. Imagine how heavy it would be to hear this song at the beginning and after that you get Live Outside. It would be so fun. And that's all from me. Thank you for watching. Celebrate the anniversary by spinning this record. It deserves some love. And I will see you in my next review. Bye!